we need so desperately honest, thoughtful, and responsive government, and we have not had it. It is time for reform candidates, for Republican candidates, for pro-growth private sector candidates to win back this town again, and you have an opportunity to start with Terry Tracy. Win, lose, or draw. May 19th, November the 3rd, what have you. The, the relationships that you build and make, and the things that you learn, and the perspective that you gain, and the minds that you change, and the hearts that you win, make all of it worth it. And Terry Tracy, starting in the campaign in 2013, uh, really established himself as, as not only a person who knows the issues inside and out, knows our fiscal situation in Philadelphia, but really can speak to the voters that will decide this election. Those voters between 18 and maybe 35 or 40 who aren't as engaged as they should be. We need candidates like Terry to really engage them. Look, the, the hottest topic in the city right now is the crisis in education, public education. And, you know, we've got these sort of artificial divides, charter versus traditional public schools, this much money, that much money, nobody knows how much money we've been spending, really. I've seen Terry, he's a man of principle, he's a man of integrity, but he also has a message that resonates with people all across this city. The message that he has, it works in South Philadelphia, North Philadelphia, Center City, that's what we need if we're going to move this city forward, is someone who can build consensus and bring an honest, a real, and a rational approach to city government that will also bring people together. And I think this is an opportunity where we can begin that process to turn the tide in the city. So that's why I'm a supporter of Terry Tracy. All right, so we're here shooting live at the Pyramid Club. I have Terry Tracy with me. He's running for City Council of Philadelphia in the Republican primary. How is it going? Great. Great. Home stretch. Yeah, how's the race been? I know that it's the home stretch. May 19th is the election, so how's everything with the race going so far? It's really good. I mean, we're about 11 days away, 11 or 12, but who's counting, right? Um, we've hit a ton of doors. I mean, we've hit eight, 9,000 doors. We'll probably cross the 10,000 mark this weekend. Um, we've been to hundreds of events all over the city. Um, we have been on radio and TV and on the phone, so we're really social media. We have done everything in our power to connect and talk to directly with as many voters as possible, which I think is really important in this kind of race. All right, that's extremely crucial, and that's what we want to hear. And to have some more detailed background information, what made you get into politics? You know, I, I've always loved politics, and not just politics, but really how government works, policy, public policy, and how um, government can be leveraged or be a partner in the process to improving people's lives. And that over the course of history, we have very good examples of it being done well, and we have examples of it being done not so well. And as a Philly guy, you know, I've been here more or less my whole life, we have a lot of examples of it not being done well. And so I thought that I would bring a unique perspective, both generationally and in terms of background of experience and all that sort of thing, to council to begin to be able to govern well so that people can have the most opportunity uh, available to them. It is this time next year, and we're celebrating on what successful year the city of Philadelphia has had. What role would you like to have played in that success? I think there are a few things that come to mind. I think first and foremost is we start having a really substantive, fact-based conversation about what's going on in the Philadelphia School District, and not just the school district, but in public education across the city. Um, and I think if in a year we can say that we can see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of being able to provide access to quality education to all of our kids in all of our neighborhoods, and we have a blueprint for success, and we have specific tangible results of it being done well, we can say we're on the right track. Um, I think that and being able to leverage some of the good things that are happening in the city's economy to bring more opportunity to more folks, if we can say those two things have been accomplished a year from now, we should be happy about the path we're on. Yeah, well that's great. Well tell us a little bit more about your platform and your slogan. I know that it's purpose, progress, prosperity. How does that reflect your path to prosperity? Could you talk more about that? Sure. So. Um, 
purpose. When I, when I talk about purpose, I'm talking about what is government's role in addressing all of these things. Too often I find that government is treated almost as a default fixer for a lot of our problems, when the reality is the business community, civic associations, religious organizations, just the community at large has a lot of stake in, in, in the way things play out. I think where, bus where government can, can be very effective is bringing those various stakeholders around the table and helping us to achieve our objectives. So when I talk about purpose, I'm really talking about the purpose of government and its role in improving people's lives. Progress, I think, speaks for itself. The city is at an inflection point. There are a lot of good things happening in a lot of parts of the city. There are also a lot of parties that, parts of the city that continue to, to struggle, to, to be under duress or distress. So I think we want to be able to leverage the success we have in parts of the city and bring it to other parts of the city, have a more inclusive uh, economy that helps folks realize their, their, their own potential and dreams. And then prosperity is sort of the next, is the, next, is the ultimate goal, right? People should um, be able to be as pro prosperous as they are able to be and, 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 are, and want to be. And I think that that's a message that resonates across the city. And that's really the core of what we're talking about, bringing true and real prosperity to neighborhoods and people all across the city. Well, that's great to hear. And I know that I'm currently the elected vice president of Temple. So that oversees about 30,000 students. And that's a huge demographic and population within the city. So how do you think that you can have positive progression for the students within the city? What can you do for them? You know, I think, and it, it sounds maybe a little cliche, getting folks out to vote. But we have to be really honest about where we're at. So there's 350, 400,000 millennials living in this city right now. It's been said in, in, in many reports, many articles, that it's a voting bloc that really has the potential to change this city. But the reality is the voter participation rate amongst millennials is, is very low. And I think when we think about the fact that we're all sort of the first generation to come of age without civics being a true part of our education growing up, we're starting to see some of the downsides of that. So I think we need to have a real civic dialogue about how to get these, drive these people that are all so engaged in so many other ways, starting their own businesses, starting their own organizations, have huge and high aspirations that are changing the face of this city. We just need to get them to sort of break that final glass barrier of political engagement. Well, that's great to hear. And I know you sound like an extremely eligible candidate to serve the city, also to unite the communities, and of course, build for the future. And thank you so much for having this I interview. The time. Thanks for coming out tonight. Yeah. Again, this has been from Philly Social, Terry Tracy. Be sure to go out and vote on May 19th.